welcome to my channel, Adult ADHD and My Journey. I'm not diagnosed yet, to be quite honest. This is my journey from pre-diagnosis through to diagnosis through to hopefully treatment. Currently driving in my car. I think better when I'm in my car, so a lot of my videos will be in my car. It's absolutely sweltering today. It's about 22 degrees. I've got my windows up. I can't have the fan blowing because you won't hear me otherwise. So bear with me. If I sweat a little, that's why. So yeah, welcome to my channel. Adult ADHD and my journey. As I said, not diagnosed yet. I've got to um, go through the whole process. I'm in probably what's referred to as hell, where I'm waiting for a diagnosis. I know what's up with me. I tick all the boxes, all the online tests that I've done that score highly in ADHD. Never thought that I had it, uh, purely because like everybody else, I had a misconception as to what it was. I thought it was for hyperactive, naughty little boys. And it's far from that. I don't really have many hyperactive traits. It is more procrastination side of things, the forgetfulness, the latefulness, the, the inability to do simple tasks that normal, normal people have no problem with. Terrible with money, terrible with paperwork. Uh, I, I have um, issues with forgetfulness. I'm impulsive. My God, I'm impulsive. I don't really think things through. I like, I get all excited about something and I want to go do it. And then I go and do it and then it doesn't really work out sometimes. Difficult, isn't it? Difficult, this whole ADHD malarkey as an adult. And finding out information is so hard. It's, it's like it's all geared to being a child and dealing with children with it. Um, again, it's that misconception that it's a children's disorder. And it's not. It's not. I've had this all my life. I've thought that I've, I've been broken all my life. You know, driving, traffic. Mr. Porsche is cutting everybody up. Let's get in behind him and see how fast he can pull off on this line. It's it's all geared towards helping your child, isn't it? And and us adults, we, we need our own kind of help. I am 41, 42 later this month. And like I said, my whole life, I've struggled with this. The ironic thing is, my mother was a clinical psychologist and I was still undiagnosed, no figure. When I was 12, however, I was struggling at school to the point where I remember saying to her, look, I'm, I'm just thick, I can't do this, I don't know why, I guess I'm just not like the other kids, I'm not clever. And she, you know, she said, you are smart, but it's your mum, isn't it? So you don't necessarily believe it. You just think that she's being there for you. She took me into university, got one of her professors to do a IQ test on me, and I scored quite high. And Jimmy 46. It's a good IQ. It's a good, healthy bit of intelligence there. And yet, academically, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not wired that way. I just don't do it well. Never did my homework. Uh, the teacher would be talking. It would just be background noise while I watched birds bouncing around outside, thinking, I wonder what it's like to be a bird and being able to fly when you want. Couldn't wait to get out of school and have my own freedom so that I didn't have to be told what to do. I've struggled with jobs all my life. Bar the army and my own business that I have now, the longest I'd stay in a job would be around three months. I'd put my heart and soul into it for the first two. I'd love it. I'd be happy as in, I'd be stimulated. And then I'd start to see through, you know, I've got a big bullshit meter and I'll start to see through the bullshit and I'd start to hate it. Bang, like that. And I'd want to leave and I would leave, I'd go. It's hard, isn't it? It's a struggle. You got to bear with me. The camera's there. I keep looking over here. I am driving. My focus needs to be here. This, this is just, a, it's my journey. I have to sign up at a new GP surgery, put in for a diagnosis and go through all that rigmarole. I'm not looking forward to it. That means taking action. I kind of suck at taking action. I might go private. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure it all out. It looks like a bit of a, a minefield if you go private. You seem to be stuck in private. But I'm just going to get into this new GP practice, get an appointment and ask to get diagnosed and, and, and see if I can get referred to a private specialist. Uh, I believe there's a right to choose system in the UK where you can avoid the long, 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 years long what I've looked into waiting list on the NHS and be referred to a private practice. I'd like some sort of meds. Um, I've, I've looked at, I'm quite anti-medication though, so I really, really not wanted to go down that road. I've always sort of suspected I had something like ADHD or autism or something, um, and I wanted to sort of not be diagnosed or labelled. 
because I think when you're labelled, you try and live to that label, and I, it's just, I need to do something now. It's getting too much. So I'm going to go and get um, diagnosed. Hopefully I can have some meds to help me. I won't lie, there was a few years ago a point where somebody gave a, a, a really mammoth task ahead of me that was pretty much impossible even for normal folk. And somebody gave me some Ritalin and I took it. I had to, uh, I had to do this task. And I remember just feeling so focused, really, like, alive, able to function, and I felt like who I should have always been, but of course, it's, you know, it wasn't prescribed to me, it was a one-off, um, and I thought that was that, I don't really get addicted to drugs, even though I've sort of recreationally used cannabis to mask my symptoms a lot of my life. But I think I need some help now. I, I you know, if, if I if I do have ADHD, from what I've learned so far, it's 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 a wiring issue inside my brain where I don't get the dopamine levels that I should do in a normal situation, normal brain. Yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's a scary time right now. It, it, it's daunting what I've got ahead of me. Everything feels very uphill. I'm a father, I'm a partner, I have three children, two very young boys, a 10 year old girl. Got one of them in the back now, I've just had to come and pick him up from the nursery as he's uh, bumped his head. And I need to be there for everybody. I need to be the best version of me. And I've tried a lot of self-help things along these years, over these years. I've tried to, to become the best version of myself. And I've always got so far down the path and then bang, I've hit a brick wall. And, you know, I firmly believe that, that it's this ADHD. I just need to get it diagnosed because people don't believe you until somebody else says it. I know what I am. I know how my brain works. I know what I have. Uh, I just need to be able to deal with it now. So this journey, you're going to see it from right now. Uh, I've, I've actually recorded several videos and not quite been happy with the quality. This is take three. Let's hope this one goes out on this channel that I've started. But this is my journey, this is pre-diagnosis. I'll take you through diagnosis, the struggles, the, the, the ups, the downs, the wins, the losses. Hopefully be able to take you through the treatment side, if I get treatment, which I should do. And then let's, let's see how I progress. And if you have ADHD, you should resonate with a lot of this. If you don't have ADHD, if, if, you, if you're undiagnosed with ADHD, but you think you have it like me now, Again, you should resonate with this. There's, there's not a lot of information for us adults. So this is gonna be my take on it, my journey. I hope that I hope that others can can you know just grab a little something, even if it's just that you're not alone. Because man, I feel so alone sometimes. With all the little conflicting things that go on inside this brain and how busy it is. You know, there's there's so many topics to talk about down this avenue, isn't there? Imposter syndrome. My dyslexia, um, my creativity, how, how I can be extremely creative, motivation when it's there, when it's not, how at times I can, if I'm focused on something, I, I'm unstoppable. It's like a superpower. And then other times I can't find that motivation, sometimes for the simplest of tasks. And it's difficult. And I don't want to live like this anymore. So I could waffle, I could carry on waffling. It's too warm to waffle. I need to get some aircon on in this car. I'm sweltering in here. Excuse the attire. I did go to the gym this morning. I haven't been home to uh, be able to get changed. Me and my partner went to the gym and we went straight to our friend's tattoo studio where she's having a bit of work done on her leg. She's having an orangutan. And unfortunately, halfway through, we've got this call from the nursery to pick up our youngest Dawson because he's bumped his head. Currently, you can see him slightly in the back there fast asleep so going back to the tattoo studio and seeing how she's getting on that's about it for now like subscribe all that usual youtube stuff there'll be a lot more videos let's see let's see where this journey goes yeah thank you for watching thank you for being part of it so far see you